All right. If you get a chance, uh, because I'm just getting familiar with you guys, if you do have an opportunity to rename yourself and put your role in your, your name, that would be helpful for me, just so I have an understanding of, of what role you guys are all in. Lots of new faces here. I know, Dave's, you, David, you got a bunch of people in, in your place, so that's okay. Just uh, try to, we'll try to accommodate the, the group in that room. Thank you so much for, for joining us. I'm also going to drop in the chat the session workbook for this session. If you get a chance uh, to download it, that's great. Uh, if not, hopefully somebody in your breakout room will be able to share that with you on the screen uh, as you'll be able to follow along. We'll be doing a breakout room. So this is session workbook is good for you to take notes in and follow along as we go. All right. So I'm joining you today from Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. So I'm just above the Montana border, uh, just right above the U.S.-Canada border. So not too far away from you. Our weather is pretty much the same as yours. If there's a forest fire in northern Saskatchewan, I smell the smoke first, and then about two days later, you guys get it. That's just the way the Gulf Stream works in this, this continent. Uh, Regina is located on Treaty 4 territory, the traditional Indigenous lands of the Cree, Ojibwe, Sotu, Dakota, Nakota, Lakota, and on the homeland of the Métis Nation. So let's get our fingers warmed up in the chat. Let me know where are you guys joining from? I know District 106 is a large district as well. So where are you joining us today? Red Luth, Eden Prairie, Naka, Maplewood, Apple Valley. Oh, you came to Regina on a random road trip? That's amazing. Why would you come to Regina? <laughs> Thunder Bay. All right. We got Thunder Bay in the house. That's awesome. Woodbury. Wow. This is amazing. Thank you guys for taking the time this evening to, to join us. Uh, as part of the email that Ed sent out, there was some pre-work that we asked you guys to take a look at uh, and complete. Uh, whether you had a chance to do that or not, uh, do want to just reflect on some of those questions. Uh, I wouldn't mind uh, some one person raising their hand and just sharing uh, with all of us why you decided to be an area director. Who would like to share? Why did you decide to be an area director? Ralph? Yes. <clears throat> Uh, I'll say that <clears throat> I've been in, a, in my club since 2012, and I decided it was time to get outside and do something a little bit more. Nice. A little more. That is awesome. And one other person, uh, what skills or abilities will best serve you in succeeding in this position? Wolfgar, did you want to answer that one? Do you get a chance to reflect on that? What what skills or abilities will serve you best in this role? I was raising my hand for the previous question, but I'll take this one anyway. Awesome. I, I think that I'm bringing a fresh perspective to my position. I think that I can be nerdy to the extreme. So the paperwork and the website and the... <laughs> Educational awards and all of that um, are going to be pretty easy for me to, to work on. And I think that I'm, I'm really enjoying meeting new people. And so I'm going to bring an excitement to the area director position. I don't know if it's been there before, but I'm certainly going to be excited to meet new people. I think that's it. That's awesome. This is like the perfect time to get creative and think outside of the box and come up with new things this year. Uh, you know, we, we, we have to start changing things and uh, you guys are coming in with fresh perspectives. So this is amazing. Uh, today during this session, 
you know, we won't go through a lot of the specifics. You'll have an opportunity to share uh, some of your thoughts. Um, I'm not going to share overly too much because we do want you guys to think differently than how we've thought before. Think outside of the box. Uh, come up with new strategies. Uh, not always doing the things we've always done them before and uh, being creative within the, the boundaries of our policies and procedures, of course. All right, one more question. Uh, who benefits if you succeed as an area director? If you do your job well, who benefits? I'd like to take that one. Beth? Yeah. The members of the um, clubs that we represent. Oh, Ralph, members of our clubs, you bet. Beth, anything else to add there? I think the area and the district are also going to gonna benefit. Yes, so we're kind of leaving a legacy, right? Strengthening, growing our, cl our clubs to strengthen and grow our district. Yes, clubs, members, but hey, we're ourselves are too. Hopefully we'll benefit from this year also. Uh, so we're super excited. We're going to get started now with the, with the session. So the role of the area director is really to serve as the di district liaison between the districts and the clubs. So you help achieve the district mission. Anybody know what the district mission is? We'd like to share it. I see Brian mouthing it. Or he's swearing at me. Hard to tell. <laughs> I think the district mission is to serve the needs of our club members and help them reach their potential. I don't know if that's exactly what it says, but that's, that's part of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The district mission is to build new clubs and support all clubs in achieving excellence. And as area directors, you also support the clubs in achieving their club mission. Uh, so that's where what Brian was referring to, like making sure that the clubs and the members are getting what they need. So that club mission being we provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. What an exciting journey this year for you guys. I'm excited to see what, what you have in store for us this year. All right, so in this session, we're gonna be focusing on making an impact in your area. Uh, you know, what are those key activities that you need to do, those key things that will help the clubs achieve their club mission? How will your activities help the district achieve the district mission? How can you make an impact being that liaison between the two? And as well, we'll talk briefly about the rules around you. Objectives by the end of the session, I hope you can recognize the relationships with, with stakeholders and leaders in the district. Recognize the importance of supporting clubs by fulfilling their roles and identify the expectations of your, of your role. So let's focus first on making an impact. So the area director's role is uniquely positioned to make a big difference in the district. You work closely with all the other key leaders in the district, and you are the person who works directly with the clubs. You have you can make, make a big impact. So let's just explore the impact that your role has on your district. We're gonna go into a breakout room. Hopefully this works for everybody. Uh, once I open up the breakout rooms, you can click join breakout rooms. Hope this will work with David and his, his group there. We'll get you into one breakout room and you, can, you guys can chat with a couple of people here. Uh, you can use the Zoom tools as necessary. So you do have the session workbook. So if, you, if somebody wants to kind of take charge, show the questions on the screen. Uh, so, well, you can assign a timekeeper to kind of keep track of time, and we'll send out broadcast messages just to keep you on track. Those will come up in the middle of your screen at the top. If you have any problems, you just push that help button, and we'll come and help support you in the breakout room.
So the activity will be to join your team in a breakout room. And in the session workbook, starting on page two, uh, there's some questions there to ask uh, to help you paint a picture of the impact that your role can have on members, leaders, and your district. So we're going to give you 20 minutes in that room to answer those questions. Uh, so does anybody have any questions before I open up the breakout rooms? Clear as mud. Does anybody need a copy of the session workbook? I'll just pop that in again for anybody who is new. Beth, you got a I question? Need, I, I need the workbook. Oh, perfect. All right. Do you see it there now? No. How do I find it? Oh, there it is. Does it pop up now for you in the chat? Nope. Okay. Well, hopefully someone in your room has a copy of the session workbook and they'll be able to help guide you through the questions. Okay. If not, just uh, holler put up that help and I will come and help you guys. All right, I'm gonna open up the breakout rooms and we'll see you back here in 20 minutes. So Beth was looking um, that workbook, right, Catherine? Pardon me? Um, Beth, Beth Club for Palmondian was looking, right? So what I will do here is I will attach and send her an email. Sure. Yep. That sounds right. good. Oh, Nicole, we don't have you assigned to a room. Sorry about that. There yeah, you go. I'm a little late. Thanks. No <laughs> All right. Do you want to pause the recording? Just so you don't forget. <laughs> oh, someone who's joined a, oops. All right, the rooms will close in about one minute. Where are you saving this recording ad? You are in mute. Okay, so it's my computer. I'll convert it to YouTube and then ask Johnny to, to house okay. it. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure. <laughs> okay, people starting to come back. Still got a few people still chatting away in the rooms. We got Dan B is driving, so we will not ask him any questions. <laughs> That's how okay. he attends his club meetings, too, in his car. <laughs> you know, I have a very uh, geographically large district as well, and uh, we would drive across our district which from one side to the other, the drive was oh, at least 12 hours. And wow. so we would take a cruise and wow. kind of cruise around the district on weekends, go to different locations for trainings. And I'd have my whole workstation set up. I wasn't driving, of course, but I'd have a whole workstation set up in my in my car. We'd stop it at Staples to print things. And it was quite quite the adventure. Anyways, Miss Toastmaster road trips. So those are hopefully will be happening again soon. All right. So welcome back, you guys. I hope you had a great discussion in the breakout rooms. I'd love to hear a few responses from folks. Uh, so just raise your hand if you're if you're willing to share what some of the thoughts were on your discussion. Uh, let's focus first on the first question. So what meaningful impact can an area director make on communication between clubs in their area? And then how can this impact be delivered? Uh, so let's start with Wolfgar. 
Thank you, Catherine. On uh, my group, we had myself, Mark, David, Eric, and Michael. And these are in no particular order, attributed to no particular person. Um, give support, showing that they had support, uh, listening to meetings, making sure that they that you fulfill the needs of their members, make suggestions as appropriate. Encourage members to visit other clubs and work together. Help clubs make sure they have everything they need to be successful, helping in any way they need help. Area council meetings where you involve the clubs and bringing more enthusiasm to the area. Nice. Excellent. Thank you, Wolfgar and team. Nicole, did you want to share some thoughts on, on this section? Well, not anymore. Wolfgar <laughs> took them all. <laughs> do, you want, do you want to go to the next question? We can go to the next question. We can go to the next question. Okay, sounds good. Okay. All right, so uh, the area director can make on club presidents. Okay, yes. So the meaningful impact area directors can make on club presidents is... They can definitely, they need to be supportive of, of the president, need to be, need to vocalize that support for the president within the clubs. And then communicating it to all officers are also making sure that the club president is communicating, um, or no, what was, show, sorry, showing, that was the other one, showing support for officers during the meeting, so showing up for the meetings, so showing up for officer meetings and making sure that you're supporting the, the club president and letting the, the officers know that that is not the only person that you're there for, but, you know, making sure that they understand they need the help, as much help as they can get because they get crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thank you, Nicole and team. Yeah, the club president is is kind of your key contact. Uh, you know, you could be a, a support buddy for them. If this is their first time as club president, it's, it can be overwhelming. It can feel a, a little scary. Uh, so your support and encouragement uh, just maybe being there can really make a, a positive impact on how the club president's experience is in the year. All right, so let's focus on what meaningful impact can an area director make on the achievement of member goals in their area? Who'd like to comment on that one? So this is specific to achievement of member goals. What impact can you make? Kathy. Okay. I think we, the thing that stands out to me that we talked about was really trying to help people with pathways, encourage people to have pathways, speeches, um, encourage the vice presidents of education to help the club set goals for um, members getting achievements to the next pathways level level. That's uh, one area that stood out to me. Oh man, there is like so many projects in pathways that uh, you can offer as service, uh, say putting on some of the area events um, to members as well. Uh, there's so you much have, opportunity there. You can have you can have an area open house. You can have, uh, first you can, you have leadership projects in certain paths that can serve, uh, you certainly can plan your contests, and you can, it's also an opportunity for you to do a high performance leadership project. <laughs> Has anyone done a um one of their Toastmasters the whole year role as a leadership project? I don't that understand has. what you're asking. So in the, say volunteering for a, mm -hmm. or leading in a volunteer organization, for example, you could use that project for your entire year as area director. Uh, so kind of having your, your working team, which is your area council, Having a, a guidance committee, if you're if you choose to do a high performance leadership project, uh, 
that's a great way for you to earn something as well. Beth, did you want to add anything there? What did you do as a, a projector? I, I just finished my level five dynamic leadership and it was all about being president of my club and, and getting to the point where I became an area director. So yes. Nice. Good job. Cool. Yeah, so there's opportunities for us, but also leadership opportunities and projects for, for our members, um, as well as encouragement, right? Uh, encouraging and celebrating when, when clubs achieve. Excellent. And last one is, um, what meaningful impact can an area director make on alignment between their district division and club in their area? And how can that be delivered? We had a little bit of a question on what alignment meant in this. Was it geography? Not specific to geography. Um, did anybody else have any, any thoughts on that? How did you interpret alignment? In a way, so when I was thinking of alignment, I was thinking of it as in <clears throat> preparing for the future, I guess you could say. So as an area director, you're working with the officers to prepare them to move into an area director position for the next year, and then so on and so forth. That's how I was looking at it, pretty much. Nice. That's, yeah, that's a great perspective, kind of the, the future and the growth of the, the district. Uh, another way to look at it would be, you know, the district's going to have goals this year, uh, what they would like to achieve. Uh, the divisions are going to have goals this year. The areas are going to have goals this year, and the clubs are going to have goals. So are they all lined up, aligned uh, to, the, to the mission? Are they lined up to the to the goals of where the district would like to be. So if the district chooses to be presidents distinguished this year, can't do that unless you get commitment by the clubs to be all be distinguished pretty much. Uh, so that means your areas will be distinguished if the clubs are, the division will be distinguished and the district will be distinguished. So kind of your role in helping to ensure that alignment is, is happening. And so you can use your success plans to really help that, you know, sharing your area, getting your clubs to share their area six, or club success plans, kind of you developing your area success plan and sharing that with your division and vice versa. So when you set your area goals, you know, checking that with the clubs, and be like, hey, do you, th do you think that we can achieve that this year? So it's an, another way to ensure alignment. But uh, also in the succession planning, like do you see yourself moving forward in this program? Um, that's a, a really great way to ensure alignment as well. Awesome. Great discussion, you guys. All right. So in review of the section, making an impact in your area you know, you got to look for those ways that you can make a positive impact wherever you can. You can't do everything yourself. <laughs> You'll need to need have a team. Uh, but where are those key areas that you could provide some uh, intervention or some advice or some guidance or just support that will help move the needle for the clubs? So focusing on those areas that have the most significant impact. And that really comes with just understanding your clubs and where they are and where you need to, to push them or get them to succeed based on their goals. What if you see they're lacking a goal that would be beneficial for that particular club? They haven't worked on that in any way. Would they have... Um, so they didn't complete their club success plan? Well, whatever. I, I guess I'm saying if, if a club has no focus on a membership drive, for example, all year long, and, and you know they're not working on that or thinking about it, are, are we supposed to bring that up to them and, and get them to be looking at that? 
Denise. Yeah. I, I just am a firm believer that you need clubs where they're at and offer your help, offer ideas. But if they are just happy where they are in their sweet little club, there's really nothing you can do and focus on the clubs that actually, that want your help in ways that you can contribute. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, every club's in a different place, eh? Uh, Linda, unmute yourself, please. Yes, yes, I did have a question. I know I, looking at my clubs, they are all struggling with membership and that will, if they can't get enough members, then they can't be distinguished. Is there club coaches that we can, available for any of these clubs that would want it? Yes, who, who do you talk to for a club coach? I would probably talk to my division director because I don't know how to get one. <laughs> Perfect. I don't know much about it. And, and the, the club, uh, uh, club growth director is, of course, an important person in this. Uh, but also, uh, when you contact them, you may find that uh, they can't just pull a club coach off the shelf. They need enough volunteers to cover the, all the clubs that want it. If you and the club know of uh, experienced Toastmasters around who might be interested in the role of club coach, okay. encourage them to volunteer for, for the role to be your club coach. They'll have to be appointed by the di district director. But uh, uh, if if you can find one, that really makes it simple, simplest of all. Yes, that's a good idea. Thank you. Awesome. Yes, great suggestion. And there's also, you know, kind of looking at your area, the clubs in your area, do you have some stronger clubs that might be, that you can help facilitate a relationship that might be able to help support clubs that might be struggling in an area or get members from that to support? But again, just let the club growth director or division director know when you're making those assignments so that they can get uh, recognized for that. Okay. Denise? I'm going to add to Linda, before we definitely want clubs to grow and thrive and become distinguished, but they might not be ready to grow yet. So really take a little bit of time to learn where they might be struggling. It could be something as simple as Zoom or meeting in a spot that's conducive for, for great meeting. Decide if they're, if they're following some of the Toastmaster structure and having good speeches, good evaluations, some really fun table topics. Are the meetings should be 50% fun, 50% productive, and just kind of figure out before you look at growing membership, possibly do they need to work on a few other things before you welcome new people in? Yeah. Yeah, there's lots of great resources to do those assessments too. Uh, if you've ever seen the Moments of Truth uh, session, that is a good one to help clubs kind of see for themselves how well they're performing in some of the key moments that matter to on a member's journey in their club. Uh, so that's a, a great assessment. And there's also surveys uh, available on at World Headquarters. Uh, but kind of back to the point of, you know, how can we make, make clubs set goals? Uh, you know, it's, it's often difficult to go in there and say, oh, you should be distinguished. Why is it, aren't you striving for that? But kind of to, to Nisa's point is understanding where they are and asking them questions with good feedback. So just like in your Toastmasters club, here's what I observed. Like your club is really seems to be uh, struggling uh, with finding speeches or, you know, people to be speakers. You know, what, what's one thing we can, we can do to maybe encourage more speakers uh, and kind of give it back to them, but just in bite-sized chunks, not, not, not something too overwhelming. Every interaction you have is an opportunity to provide uh, a lot of encouragement and maybe one or one or two suggestions of, what they, not what they should do, but what problem they might want to focus on as an executive. 
Well, but Linda brought up a good point. Where do we get coaches? Kind of our next section is going to be actually looking at the rules around us as area directors. And I know we got some division directors and our executive here as well. You're not alone. You work in a system. You work with other folks that have roles and responsibilities. Uh, so we're going to take a look at, at that a little bit more. Of course, your role is critical, but you work with other people who provide opportunities to collaborate, to support achievement in your area. There's a lot of opportunities to make an impact on your area, division, district, and organization but it's pretty easy to get drawn in many directions. So let's spend some time to identify the other rules that you'll work with and connect those rules with the work that needs to be done. All right, did everybody get a chance in the pre-work to look over the district leadership handbook? You guys have that memorized front to back, right? The first page. <laughs> The first page. Oh, the service to the member. That's a fantastic page to start with. Uh, so there was a, a page about the roles and responsibilities for area director, and I won't get into too much detail, but I'll just highlight a few of those. You could go back and, and read it in a little bit more detail. Uh, but of course, you're there to provide guidance uh, to the to the officers, particularly the ones that are members of your area council uh, and anybody that's requesting your support. You are the chair for the area council. Uh, so you kind of lead that group. That's your that's your team. And I, I think Stephen, uh, last time you guys met, talked a little bit about roles uh, possibly for your area council and team members that you might call upon. Uh, so this is just another friendly reminder about that. You, you don't, don't work alone, uh, but your area council is made up the president, the VP ed, and the VP membership in each of your clubs, plus any assistant area directors that you have helping you, uh, and a possibly a secretary if the uh, organization is not your strong suit. Always good to get somebody very well organized to help with all that, all that admin work. Now, I, I see three roles on that chart there that don't specifically say there's somebody coming from one of the clubs. Area secretary, program quality and club growth. Who are we asking to be taking those positions? Oh, some potential and maybe other people have some thoughts could be past area directors uh, might be good folks to help with. Or let's say last year or this year we see a, a VP PR that was, did really, really well. They might be someone who might not be ready to be an area director, but want to learn about it and do a little bit more. I think that's what you said, Ralph, at the beginning of the, the session. Yes. So providing that opportunity to others, those go-getters in the, in the area. You could also go outside of your area. Uh, that wouldn't be too much of a harm either. I don't think if you guys are, as long as you're not uh, stepping yeah, on each other's toes don't want to do is interrupt uh, something that's going on at the club level by pulling a resource out of that club uh, that, that may have to spend a lot of time in this role here to, to get up to speed or something like that, I would assume. Yeah, yeah. Beth, do you have some thoughts? Um, I have a question. So I this is my first time being an area director, so all new to all this stuff. But I've, I've been an officer in my club for the past two years, and I've never heard of area council until a couple of weeks ago. So it's not something that apparently was happening. And I guess I'm, I'd like to know, is that, is that something that, that happens? How often does it happen? Um, are there, you know, are they kind of hit and miss? I mean, I'm, I'm looking for kind of a reality check. How, how many areas actually do area council meetings on some kind of regular basis? Yeah, we're going to talk. <laughs> we're going to talk about that a little bit more in our last session on effective meetings. Uh, so we'll okay. be able to spend a little bit more time on the area council. So if you can hold that question, uh, I can tell you, yes, as part of your roles and responsibilities, a minimum requirement is two per year to have the area council. 
so I know it's been a challenge for many area directors. And if it hasn't been customary for some time, it does take a little while to get people used to it. But we'll focus on what's the reason for having them uh, in our last session, have a little bit of more discussion around that. And, uh, you know, if people know why they're there and why you're asking them to spend their time, kind of to Ralph's point, like why are, why are we asking them for more time when they don't have time? There is a reason. There's a value to it. So we'll talk about that in our last session. Thanks. You bet. All right, so let's move along in this one. We've got area progress is another uh, area of responsibility. So keeping track of how the clubs are doing, re reporting that up to the, to the division director. Uh, you're responsible for distinguished programs. Uh, so making sure clubs understand what those are, that they uh, know what, what the requirements are. You're advising them on, on what that means. And area speech contests, of course. So you not only belong to your area council team, but you also belong to the division's council team. Uh, so that's, you would meet with your division director as well uh, and be able to plan and coordinate in that. And we'll talk a little bit more about division council meetings later on as well. And you also belong to the district executive committee and the district council. So I know I went through, that's a lot of information, but all this information is included in your district leader handbook. So I'll get you guys to go back and review that. And if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to your division director or one of the other district leaders and they'll be able to answer questions that you have. I need but, a few more heads for all these hats that I have to wear. I know, right? More team members. Yep. More opportunities, more opportunities to the team members. Clubs need more members, right? So this is all uh, speaking to how membership is so vital in our organization and needs to be a, a constant, uh, constant stream of work. All right, so let's go into a, a bit of an activity. Uh, there is a, in your session workbook on page five, there is an activity that allows you to go through a bunch of questions and kind of pull out who does what. Again, all the answers are in the district leader handbook, but we're just going to find some, do something a little bit fun right now to just get our juices flowing and thinking about who are those people that we need to go to and connect with. So for those of you who are in a desktop or if you want to use your mobile device, I've got an online quiz that we're going to go through together. If this doesn't work for you, that's okay. Let's give it a shot and see how this will work. So if you go to www.menti.com and type in the code 62695371, no spaces. Uh, and again, we're starting on page five of your session workbook, but let's focus on the poll first of all. If you are on your desktop, I just dropped the link straight to the survey in the chat. So you can click on that and that will take you to the poll. All right. How are you guys doing? Getting there? Okay, so at the top again. I'm sorry, what was the code? Uh, 62695371. No spaces, though. It's just got spaces to help you see the code. Can you put that in the chat, maybe? Or Okay, here it is. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Sorry, I just closed. All right, so the first question is, whose responsibility is it to coordinate activities of area directors? Is it the district director, program quality director, club growth director, public relations manager, administration manager, finance manager, division director, or the area director? Division director. Wait, you're not supposed to give the answer yet. <laughs> All right. Let's show results. Oh. Division director. It's a real test is let's see if who's correct yes division director was correct awesome 
Oops. Oh. I'm going to send the results to my email. <laughs> Just hang on a second. I kind of bugger it up there. All right. Cool. Let's go to the next question. I don't, hopefully this has popped up for you or it does refresh. Whose responsibility is it to train all division directors, area directors, and club officers? I'm hitting F5, but that's it's not refreshing. refreshing? Do you have a next? I, Do you have a... I'm, I'm at thank you for your participation after just having submitted the one. No worries, no worries. Maybe try to click on the link again and open it up and see if it, close the browser and open up again. Uh, uh, or just not, hit, the, okay. hit the little refresh button on your website browser. I think that's what he's trying. Uh, well, okay, all right. Rather than uh, the function. Okay, this, this time it, it did work. I went to full screen. Perfect. All right, so let's take a look. Whose responsibility is it? Let's see how we did. Oh, we got some votes for district director and some for program quality director. Correct answer is program quality director. Yeah, so Ed's putting on this these uh, training sessions for you, uh, as well as uh, club officers. Um, doesn't mean he's doing all the work himself. He, he needs a team, uh, but all right. Okay, next question. Who keeps the minutes of the district council and district executive committee meetings? See some results coming in. All right, let's show the administration manager. Oh, we got one there for uh, PQD. So Ed, Ed, <laughs> correct answer is, yes, the administration manager, formerly known as the secretary, will still be called the secretary at the district council meeting. Those are the person you will receive minutes from after the district council meeting is completed. Next question, whose responsibility is it to develop and administrate a public relations program? In the district. In the district? <laughs> yes. All right, let's see. Yes, public relations manager. That was way easy. Look at 100%. You guys got that right. That's right. Yes, that's right. Yes, the public relations manager in your district does coordinate activities across all the VPPRs, uh, public relations managers in each of the club. Often that is uh, often an area of focus and training for them, uh, but they are overseeing a public relations program for the district. So if you have any questions about PR, that's the person you talk to. Right, recruit and train the district marketing team. Who does that yet? Let's see what results we got so far. Ooh, this is a little all over the place. We got district director, program quality director, club growth director, public relations manager, finance manager, lots of options. Let's see what the correct answer is. The club growth director. So they are responsible for marketing uh, in the district, including training uh, the district marketing team. Uh, so anybody who's involved in membership building or uh, club building, anything that gets the word out 
about the district and the opportunities of Toastmasters in the district. Uh, a little bit different. There's, I can see why public relations would be uh, selected as well. The public relations manager does work on public relations. So goodwill uh, usually means free publicity out there. Uh, the club growth director has the has the money for the marketing budget to do advertising. Uh, I know last year Ed did a bunch of billboard advertising, so that was uh, uh, him and his team worked through that. Do we have one more? All right. Take charge of all funds and other personal property of the district. Who would be responsible for that? All right, let's see what you guys got. Finance manager. Yes. Oh, yes, yeah, district director. Ultimately, the district director has the fiduciary responsibility for the district money, uh, but the finance manager distributes funds and, and keeps track of everything for him. And whose responsibility is it to represent the district director and, if applicable, the division director to the clubs of the area? <laughs> All right, let's see what you guys got. That's correct, area director. That's right, you are the liaison between the district and the clubs. The district leaders can't get to every single club in the district. You are the, the face of the district uh, in, with the clubs. Uh, so you represent the district director, represent the district every time you're out there doing work in service of the clubs. All right, let's stop that. Thank you guys for playing along. There is a lot more information about... Uh, the roles and all the answers as well, in case anybody was looking ahead and cheating on page eight of the session workbook. Uh, so there's training, all uh, division area and club officers is the pre program quality director, appointing the district leadership committee is the district director. So lots of information here. Uh, you can scroll down and kind of see where your role is representing the district director at the clubs, appointing an area staff for the conduct of area activities in between uh, area council meetings. So it was kind of keeping track of that area council action plan, holding regular area council meetings. Uh, and also just want to highlight the uh, district director is there to inspire and motivate team members to achieve goals while considering their development needs. So district director Gopu kind of oversees all of HR uh, activities for the district. And so that's a, a big role, big shoes to fill. So taking a look at that session workbook, I've got a couple of extra questions for you. Oops, wrong one, sorry folks. Which roles rely most on your support? So taking a look at those district leaders that we talked about, which roles rely most on your support? This is where you want us to shout it out? Yeah, raise your hand. Sorry about that. Yeah, raise your hand. Wolfgar. The district directors. How so? How so, Wolfgar? Did you say how so? Yes. Um, I'm sorry, did I say district or division? I meant division. Division? Okay. 
The How so? directors are um, relying on your support to relay everything from the top down and also to establish um, relationships with the clubs, act as a liaison, uh, possibly uh, know people who may want to be area directors in the future, um, things of that nature. Yes. I also liked your first answer too, the district director. He can't really see what's actually going on in the club unless that information gets passed along and up. So you guys are also instrumental um, to the district director because without you, he would be, he would just be looking at numbers and wouldn't be able to hear the stories from you. How hard are we going to get spanked if we go as an area director, go over the division director straight to the next one up on the food chain? Is your division director here? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. We're all a team. Who's the next one on the food chain, in your opinion? You know, we, we do have a structure, uh, but, you know, we are a team. We're a team of volunteers. I would definitely, if you had questions and you went to another district leader, I would definitely inf at least inform my division director and let them know that that's what, what you're doing. Okay. That, that's a good answer. I like that. I don't think anyone smacks anybody in Toastmasters, that's for sure, but cool. All right, I'm going to move on to the next question. Which roles in the district do you depend on to fulfill your responsibilities? Club presidents. Our council, the area council. Yep. Yep, from that perspective, absolutely. You can't do any of the work for the clubs. They have to do it themselves. Uh, but looking at the district roles, so the administration manager, the finance manager, club growth director, program quality director, district director, division director, who do you most depend on? Division director. In, in what way? They're they're my he's my he's my direct link to knowing everything who to go to where to get help answer questions thank you David <laughs> <laughs> yes you know their responsibility is to really make sure you guys are being supported and you have the opportunity to grow and develop as leaders in this position they're kind of your your hr person that's really looking out for you uh, you know some of the other district rules as well it could include um, you know the program quality director you know they need to make sure those training programs are are out there so that the clubs are ready and prepared otherwise your training all the clubs officers in your area all alone. So without those training programs, they, they're sure helpful, sure is consistency. So there's other rules that that uh, you can rely on, depend on as well. All right, so just uh, in our final moments here in this, this first session, just to review this section, all the rules around you, Know who depends on you and who you depend on as an area director. So take a look at that, that list and do a little bit more reflection on how you relate to each of those officers in the district. Um, there's also explanation of all the district leader roles in the district leadership handbook. So it's a good opportunity to read through what's their responsibility versus what's yours and uh, know who you can rely on or who needs to rely on you and know what you need to deliver and to whom in order to achieve success. So this first session, we talked about making an impact in your area and the roles around you. There's some additional resources in your session workbook on page 10 and a reflection activity on page 11 for you to complete on your own. So just in the chat before we, we end the session, what is one thing you learned from the session that you will implement in your role? And we'll do this through the chat.
Area Council. Area Council. We're going to talk more about that later on too. Utilizing the Area Council. Yeah. Working with my clubs to set area goals, area success, club success. Meet clubs where they are. Oh, that was such a great discussion, you guys. Let's. Area success plans. Awesome. That is all the time that I have this evening for this session, but I'll be back later on in the program to talk about effective meetings, but I will pass it back to your program quality director, Ed. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much, Regent Advisor Catherine Secundiak. Wonderful presentation. The time flew by. I thought that was really well done. Thank you for that. Lots of things to think about. Next on our program, I'd like to introduce Division E Director, Distinguished Toastmaster George Kane, who wants to share some thoughts with you, area directors, about speech potential topic areas that you might want to consider using when you visit clubs. George, lectern is yours. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> I joined Toastmasters in 1992. Uh, in addition to the competent communicator manual and the advanced communication manuals, the Better Speakers series and the Successful Clubs series were required for the educational program. After earning a competent uh, communication award, the competent leader award only required serving six months as a club officer and doing two presentations from one of these uh, series or, or both of the series, uh, just two presentations total. Uh, <clears throat> these series still exist, but they're not integrated into pathways. Most Toastmasters today will never encounter many of the presentations in the series, but they still exist. However, presenting any of these projects uh, do not count towards pathways levels. Now I'd like to share if I may, let's see, let's go here. Okay, let's see, where is the, I've got to move you people out so that I can, oh shoot, how do I go to, uh, uh, presentation F5. mode. F5? Yep. Okay, thanks. Great. Okay. All right. Uh, the uh, successful club series is now available as a free download. Just log into Toastmasters uh, website and search for successful club series, and you can then download it as a zip file. And each presentation has a script, an evaluation sheet, uh, and uh, and in, and a PowerPoint slideshow. When I was doing a lot of these presentations, we did not have PowerPoint slideshows. We had transparencies that we showed on uh, overhead projectors. And uh, yes, uh, by this time we had discovered fire, but uh, perhaps not gone much further. So uh, uh, for the, for a long time. The successful club series projects were an important tool for area directors. They were frequently asked to give speeches at, uh, the, at their clubs and presenting a project as a way to provide valuable instruction while fulfilling these requests. So here are the projects in that series. First moments of truth, and this was mentioned earlier and this still is uh, given quite a bit, used to be recommended that clubs give uh, I have a moment of truth presentation every year. Uh, it uh, <clears throat> it uh, discusses six areas in which a club has a, an opportunity to make a favorable, a favorable impression on club members. Uh, these are first impressions, membership orientation, fellowship variety and communication, program planning and meeting organization, membership strength, and achievement recognition. So the members would rate their clubs in these different areas and uh, would make recommendations that the club officers then would use uh, 
would use this feedback to develop plans. Next, uh, there's finding new members. And of course, that's useful to clubs. And now everyone is in a rebuilding mode. And it's useful for formulating membership building plans. It emphasizes the best recruiting tool is an, enth an enthusiastic member. Toastmasters produced a lot of material on how to provide effective evaluations. Evaluate to motivate is one that can be presented in a five to seven minute speech. It focuses on how the speech evaluator should interact with the speaker before the meeting and uh, how show his interest during the speech. And in addition to formulating an oral evaluation that leaves the speaker looking forward to his next presentation. I haven't given this presentation in a long time, but just a few days ago, uh, I heard a very negative evaluation that leads me to believe that one of my clubs needs a refresher. I'm scheduled to speak there in a couple of weeks and I think I'm going to give this presentation. Closing the sale is the bookend of the finding new members presentation. After you've recruited uh, potential members to visit your club, how do you convince them to join? Immediately after they've attended the meeting is when the guest's interest in Toastmasters is the highest, and he's thinking that this club would provide him useful training and would be fun. So don't let him leave with no more than, I hope you decide to visit us again. This is the time to get his signature on an application. Creating the best club climate works with many of the themes of the other projects in the successful club series. Clubs that succeed are those that have uh, meetings that are enjoyable, efficiently run, where all the members are working toward personal improvement and are supportive of, of each other. This presentation works well as a refresher a few months after the moments of truth. Now, without question, the successful club series project that I've given the most is meeting roles and responsibilities. This presentation uh, covers the jobs at a Toastmasters meeting. The Toastmaster, Topic Master, Speakers, General Evaluator, Speech Evaluators, Timer, Grammarian, and Ah Counter. Uh, I often go rogue and present my own ideas about some of these roles. For example, I consider the Ah Counter to be the most difficult role as the ah counter has a responsibility to give the club a report that's useful to the members of the club and to help them to recognize when they lapse into disfluencies and recognize how to avoid them. I also point out the only member who is not evaluated is the general evaluator. So the Toastmaster should point out if there is anyone the GE should have evaluated but did not, as well as additional roles assigned by some clubs such as presenter of the invocation or thought of the day, a joke master, a ballot counter, parliamentarian. Uh, these are covered uh, in this presentation, but uh, there are more that uh, are not that some clubs adopt, such as a table topics evaluator or the Zoom tipster. The presenter can tailor the presentation of the roles adopted by the hosting club. Optionally, the presentation concludes by summarizing responsibilities of the club officers. Uh, <clears throat> so if you're presenting to a club with a poor record of attendance at club officer training, this section could be a valuable service to the club. Mentoring is still a worthwhile presentation, even though Toastmasters has expanded training for this role in Pathways. The presentation covers the responsibilities of a mentor, the value of mentoring to new Toastmasters, and the value to an experienced Toastmaster. Uh, the benefit to mentors, benefit to clubs, and the steps in mentoring. Meeting the commitment details the items in the Toastmaster promise that all members sign on to when they submit their membership application. These responsibilities all members have throughout their club membership. Now, going beyond our clubs, uh, now Toastmasters has uh, 
done a lot of surveys that have shown that members all seem to love their clubs, but many of them have no idea why they should try ever going beyond the club. Uh, so why would they want to visit other clubs? Why would they want to attend speech contests or a conference or a convention? And why would they ever want to be an area director? Now, area directors, one of your duties is to look for your successor. If there are promising candidates for area director in one of your clubs, consider giving this presentation as a tool for recruiting one. Now, please ignore the uh, Toastmasters educational program. It's based on the legacy educational program, which is no longer in effect. Uh, this is of historical interest only. So area directors, if your clubs offer you the opportunity to speak, don't hesitate, accept. Just fire up PowerPoint and you can bring educational value to your club with these successful club series. Now, I'd like to demonstrate something too. Let's see if I can just, okay, move the gallery and no, how do I, well, let me, There we go, okay. And move you people out of the way and escape. And I wanna show you an important trick in using these. That, um, whoops, that if I go to, uh, move, you, move you people again. If I go to the Successful Club series and just click on one of these uh, PPS files, their PowerPoint slideshows, that what happens is it comes up in presentation mode and you can't get out of presentation mode. So you can't get into editing from here. So the thing to do is to instead open up PowerPoint. And then, open, and then you can navigate to wherever you have the, the PPS file saved and it opens up this way. So now you can edit it. Uh, you can first off file, save as, and then up here where it says uh, PowerPoint show. George, you, George, yeah? I think you are not sharing the one with you are talking. Yes. Oh, I'm not. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, that. Oh, let's see. Oh well, I'll just tell you that without uh, needing the visual aid, just open up PowerPoint, navigate to the one you want, to the uh, file you want, uh, click on it. It'll open in a mode where you can then save it as a .dot .pptx file, and then you'll be able to edit it to suit. Uh, the meeting that you're going to and any changes that you're making to the presentation such so as editing it for length available, length of time available. Back to you, Mr. Uh, host. Thank you, George. If you would please stop sharing your screen. Yeah, if I can find how to do that. Let's see, here it is. There we go. Excellent. Thank you so much. Nice presentation. Good things to think about. So if you're uptight thinking, what am I going to say to my clubs? Look at that successful club series. There's some great information there. The material already prepared for you. At this time, we're going to take a 10-minute break. So be back here at 7.44, and we will continue at that time. Thank you. And there he is. All right. Thanks, Bill. We're talking to you, Goku. At this time, please help me welcome to the virtual lecture, District 106 Director, Distinguished Test Master Goku Shrestha, who's going to speak to us about how we can thrive. Goku. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. PQD. <laughs> how we can thrive. Okay. This is not an advertisement. This is dust my personal experience which I am going to share. 
when I was an area director, I was not aware of what I am going to do because I was just picked, I was interviewed, and I was like, you have to take care of five clubs. How? You will get manuals. Waiting for manual, I haven't got that. Thank God my division director gave me the manual, I read it all. Day one, I sent an email and said that, I'm your area director, I want to come and see your clubs and want to learn from you. I was so scared because some folks are saying that, oh, you are an area director, you are the boss of five clubs. And some, my mentor said that, no, this is just opposite. You are the servant leader of five clubs. I said, really? Yes. But how I can do that? First thing and best thing that I ever did was I introduced myself and I sent an email to Vice President of Education and CC Club President and said that when is your club, when does your club meet? At that time they used to you know, there is no virtual meeting, we have to go in person. And I went there. And I find from website also, I went there with an area director on that. What I came to know was when I went there as a baby face, scared, they give me such a respect and they gave, in, gave me an opportunity to speak out. Believe me, that time I have no idea what I have to speak. I gave a speech and after this speech, folks are saying, what did he say? And that was one of the person, that one of the person was Ed Edward. The thing, what I'm trying to say here is, this is a great opportunity for you to go and visit club. You never know. In that club, there are past president, past district, a uh, past district director, past international director. You never know. Like Catherine will be there, maybe waving a timer rolls. You never know who are there. Just introduce yourself, go there and watch how they run the meeting. This is the key. Benefit number one, you will be aware that you are out of the box, out of your club and see how other people are conducting same mission with um, uh, 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 Catherine just said, district mission. We build new clubs and support members to achieve their excellence. Same thing, different way. First thing, club is it. And when you are doing club visit, just make sure that there are reports we have to submit. In our time, we have to submit eight, eight pages, nine pages, type all, and it might be repeated again and again. But this time it is very easy. I try to do that. It's very easy within maximum 10 minutes, you will fill it out. That is the report which will not only you will be, uh, uh, you will be submitting, it will go all the way chain up to the international offices. And especially, I'm the person which Catherine was saying, he have to know what is going on. He, he, he can't run all, all clubs, but you are the face. You are Gopu. You are taking the banners. You are the boot on the ground, visiting clubs and helping district officers. So when you are doing visiting a club visit, one thing you will notice and you have to notice is you are in an organization where leaders are made. You have to observe a person who is actively supporting you. You are the person who will be selecting Toastmaster of the year to your division or for your area then division will pick from area and go for this. So when you are visiting that club, just keep your eye and ear open. See who is, who is very active there, who want to learn more. Make note on that. And next time have contact with them, good, bad, make a good rapport with him or her and start to bring up to the leadership position. 
second thing division director are responsible to select their area director of division so more you follow more you read more you show your excellency they will definitely appoint you or select you as area director of the year. then do we uh, trio will elect and we will select the area director of the year. 2017 i was the area director of the year when there was say district 16 divisions and 100 in, i think 300 clubs i just talked with my past division director and he, he was congratulating me and he was asking me how i can help you never know in a team you will find best person as a best buddy like ed since 2017 i find him a be best friend he is still with me in a trio member you never know third thing which you have to do here is which i'm going to share very little bit but i already trained division director there is another awards which you are eligible for is distinguished area select area and president distinguished area how you can make it happen there are some tools and techniques you have to learn so start working from for them right now All right so some of the things which i would like to share what, what is there is like this I hope you guys are seeing my screen here. I don't want to take a lot of PowerPoint presentation. So what I'm trying to see here is how you can try is just visit your club. That's it. Visit your club, be a best listener. And this is what I'm gonna do. What is the club visit, how to do, and what is expected. Basically, when you are visiting a club, you want to make sure that the club know about moment of truth, which we have discussed all this kind of thing. Moment of truth, which I'm going to share very little, but you can do by your own. You have to make observe what are the club experience when you are visiting, how the club are supporting members, and what are the club concerns. As you already heard from our previous presenter, that you are the person who are listening their concern and bringing up to the chain of command so they can bring all these tools all these resources for them to help for me yes club growth director have her own team which is going to help you uh, our program quality director have their own team if you need some club need special training he's ready right there just ask him and i need training for this people like those kind of things, you have to keep eyes open in four ways. So basically in high level, what are a, a moment of truth? It's not all here. I don't want to make messy here, but it, I'm going to show you in a few minutes what is moment of truth. Basically moment of truth is a self-evaluation, self-soul searching. So when you are doing there, when you are listening there, visiting their club, just see what are the first impression when you get. Suppose you are a guest, when you visit a club, what first impression you get? How the clubs are doing member orientation? What are the fellowship varieties and communication they are doing with the uh -huh. members and new uh -huh. guests? How they are planning and organizing the meetings? Like they have an agenda, they, have, they are calling for people to, plan for next uh, uh, pathway, those kind of things. And what are the membership strengths? How clubs are doing with their, they are retaining members, adding members, or just four or five people all the time. And when they are doing, are they recognizing the members? Because this is a volunteer club. This is where they come and practice. But everybody needs recognition. We are not a paid club, but we need recognition. Those kind of things you have to observe. Second thing, what is your club experience? For example, uh, when you are there, maybe it's meeting going way all out of the track or what are the ways, how they are conducting, just observe, don't say anything. 
don't say anything don't interrupt and just try to see if uh, uh, if they find find a club there is a website find a club is that updated or not because for example if we are trying to do advertisement and people want to see where is i want to go a club if that club has the right date and time for meeting those kind of things you have to observe there Second thing, how they are supporting clubs, which is basically, are they helping members to achieve their educational goal? If they are achieving their educational goal, are they submitting that award? Are they asking members to put plan forward so they can follow that plan and have that achieved? Another is, there is a lot of concern in class. They are not venting out. You are the only person whom you build a trust with that club officer and let them know that you can have bring help for them to make this club survive and thrive. These are the strongest thing which you will develop, not as accomplishing as the area director. If you successfully execute this one, you will be best leader for your family, for your job, for your profession, for your social life. Because you are the person who are listening, who are providing them solutions, and you are making them empowered to take their own charges. So I'm going to share this one for you guys, but uh, there is some videos how to submit your uh, AD report. So this is the link which I have, which was uh, developed by our uh, uh, currently uh, international director, I think he's gone. Then what you have to do is basically log into toastmaster.org, click on your profile, district central, area director visit, and just basically select the club and then click create. Before I share anything, any question till now? Okay, I know this is kind of boring, <laughs> but let's see what, what are the tools we have here. You know, the best thing for you is Google. Whatever you heard here, just Google it. Let me show you how I did. Okay, so share. Google, okay? This is your best friend. What we have talked talk about in this presentation, moment of truth. And always put Toastmasters, right? Try to find where is toastmaster.org slash all these things. When you click this one, you will have all this information. Let me go and click here. You will see all this manuals here. You download here, you will see all this handouts and slides all there. I'm not going to do that, but these are the things what you get. Now let's go for our Toastmasters. So let me share new screen and share here. Okay, so when you log into, I hope you got, are you guys seeing my screen, like my, my profile here? Okay, so when you log in, basically what you will see here is your own profile and go here, welcome, go here profile, right? When you click your profile, scroll down. Uh, by two weeks, you will get access to this one. There's a club central and district central. Other member won't get this access. So just click here right when you click here you will see here area director visit report click there all right see here if when you are a, uh, if you are area one you will have only three clubs of area one for me i have all all clubs so whatever you club you want to go and visit just click there and start create which i said and you will get all this option when you when you have created and those kind of things. So it will literally won't take you, just, just uh, 
meeting observation, club experience, club support, club concern, review and submit. Right, so give me one minute. I know Ed, I have seen this one. So where there is moment of truth, you just make sure this, that is not or not. One thing what you have to notice here is, instead of doing anything, you, you have to just click here. What is your experience? Five star, when you write five star, you have to write your observation here and seven submit. This way, once you click seven submit, you will be moving forward to next level. So how you can survive and thrive? Basically, go visit, write your comment. Again, call them, call for area council meeting with uh, um, our uh, Catherine is going to uh, make more advanced. This is how I did area council meeting. Call club president, vice president for coffee or just a small breakfast or any anything. Open forum. They said how I can improve, how we can help each other to make our member retain and gain. They will start throwing everything. Make note, make another round. This way you will make your great friend there and make your area success and make yourself a successful surviving and thriving area director of the year. Please contact your division director. I'm having the division director every two weeks. Share whatever you have. I will train them and definitely you will get all the services which you want. Like this, I am at the bottom. You are my face. Let me know whatever you want. I am ready to give. Thank you very much. Mr. Program Quality Director. Thank you very much, Koku. A lot of material to think about. Wow. <laughs> Area Director, well, there's a lot more to it than we might have suspected. But it's very, very rewarding. It's one of the most enjoyable roles in Toastmasters, in my opinion. We're to the last presentation of the evening. And our speaker is once again Region 4 Advisor Catherine Sekundiak, who is modifying her presentation on the fly to adapt to the information that she's heard here this evening and hopefully focus us where we need the most support. That's one of the wonderful things about Catherine. She is very supportive. Please help me welcome to the virtual lectern once again. Catherine Secundia. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ed. Uh, you know, there's a couple of things I took away from uh, GoPoop that I just want to reinforce to you guys. Um, I I didn't know what I was doing as area director either when I first started. It was um, completely foreign to me, the whole district level. So I can totally empathize with where Gopu was starting out from and where some of you might be starting out from as well. Uh, but there's a, a couple of key things that I wanted to just reinforce is the building rapport or building relationships and how important that is. Uh, if anybody is here is readers, um, I do have a book recommendation. Uh, Matt Kinsey, our international president, gave um, asked each of the region advisors to get a copy of this book and read it. So I don't know if you can see that, but it is The Speed of Trust by Stephen M. R. Covey. So it's Stephen Covey's son, Speed of Trust. So it's a great opportunity to kind of learn how to build relationships and trust and do that quickly. Uh, because if you want to be able to be effective and have influence in the clubs, it's really, they need to trust you and know that you got their back. Uh, so this is a really awesome book. Um, also, my personal favorite, this has been very impactful for me, um, by, by Edgar Schein, is Humble Leadership. Uh, another book of how you go in to ask questions, to better understand, like we were talking about, where that person is at and uh, what's most effective for them. How can you give them help faster? So those are just a couple of things. Um, I'll put the book titles in the chat uh, in just a moment, but I wanted to kind of change the perspective of effective meetings based on what I heard earlier today. It sounds like we want to kind of dive into area council meetings, and I'm going to touch a little bit on division council meetings as well. Uh, so those will be kind of our main objectives. Let's let's learn what those are. But I, I kind of want to hear from anybody who's had experience. I know some of us have not, 
but uh, kind of anyone who's out there, uh, what is the purpose of the area council meeting? You may have any experience with area councils and and what what the purpose would be. Division well, directors, one, executives, go ahead. One, one thing you do in an area council is you plan the speech contest. Speech contest is a key. Is kind of a key contact point. With the pandemic, it was a weak. It was a weakness because a lot of areas didn't have area directors last year, and there was poor participation in the in the speech contest as a result. So, planning a speech contest and getting full participation is a a really good way to build rapport even with the public because. If someone's in a speech contest, they invite their parents, they invite their their spouse or their family, or somebody, or their, and and it's just or or a friend, and and it just it shows us shows them that Toastmasters isn't just making toasts like like <laughs> little joke goes. Oh yes, that is awesome, and you know, and it, it kind of goes beyond the contest as well. This is any area events or activities. Uh, you know, kind of engaging the clubs and getting them to help with the planning uh, really ensures you got some some buy-in. What other thoughts do people have on what's the purpose of the area council meeting? David, do you have your hand up? I do have my hand up. Uh, what I need to say about the area council meeting is it's a great way to oh david it's it's so uh, hard to hear you <laughs> i'm so sorry okay, I'm, I'm sorry maybe just keep going. acoustics the whole so I'm, sorry about that no worries Oh yeah, it's still not still not coming through. Sorry about that, David, but maybe you can enter some responses in the chat or follow up with an email afterwards. All right, so the area council meetings are kind of a safe place for club leaders to share their challenges, uh, such as membership challenges, uh, and exchange ideas with each other. You know, beyond just planning activities. Uh, you know, getting status reports or, uh, you know, doing that for a reason. It's really important to make sure that the meetings that you create or offer to the club leaders have some value for them. Why should they attend? What will they get out of it? Why should they spend time with you? So really understanding and, and showing the purpose of the meeting is very key. Uh, so let's go through the, we're going to first look at the district leader handbook. I know you guys have all memorized this, but we'll we'll take a look at the area council requirements or details about that in the, in uh, that guide. All right, so I just want to make sure that this is large enough for everyone to see. Oops, that might be. Is everybody able to see that okay? Cool. Okay. All right. So it talks a little bit about the area purpose. So ensuring that each club fulfills its responsibilities to its members to become a distinguished club, promote and extend the benefits of membership in Toastmasters Club, help in organizing of new clubs, facilitate the training of club officers, Encourage clubs to undertake efforts that create greater community awareness of Toastmasters and making Toastmasters available to more people and overseeing and conducting the speech contests in the district at the area level and participating in the division as well. Uh, so as we talked about before, the area council members uh, must include the area director uh, yourself. You are the chair, the area directors. Uh, 
possibly the assistant area director program quality or assistant area director club growth or whatever assistance you can get if you can get one that's great either a, a past area director as a mentor to you or an up-and-coming uh, leader that could be of assistance it could be short term it could be long term uh, it could be a specific role as well I, I know when I was area director my past area governor at the time uh, she was really excited to do a newsletter and kind of help connect the clubs that way so in when i took over for her she stayed on and focused just on the newsletter which was a, such a great help because she was knowledgeable about uh, things that were coming up so your structure can look however you need it could be short term it could be long term but it and a secretary also helps or you could ask people to just take minutes of meetings in everybody take turns uh, we've done that in our area before uh, but it does include the club presidents a club vp of education and the vp of membership uh, the area council manages the area activities and support each club in the area in fulfilling the club mission and it meets at least twice each year at least twice uh, meetings are conducted in person or online and you do need to notify attendees at least four weeks in advance uh, that's just the minimum Wolfgar uh, I see that uh, club VP membership is listed here as part of the area council that's the first time I've seen that I've usually only seen president and VP education is that a recent addition or something um i've maybe first came to my consciousness uh, a few years ago uh, but i don't recall exactly if it had changed from the past but that's very possible uh, i think when i was uh, area governor i i feel like i only focused on presidents and vp eds uh, but i feel at some point it opened up to membership as well So this information is not only included in the district leader handbook, but it also is included in the club leadership handbook. So if you are, you know, not sure how to educate or inform clubs, reading their leadership handbook would be a good place. Uh, so it is, this information is also listed here. So they can see what the functions of the area council are, club officer training membership building identification of opportunities for new clubs in their organization promotion of the distinguished club program uh, and area speech contests and, and goes through uh, some of those and there is also some uh, business discussed at the area council meetings so this could include club plans goals and progress in the distinguished club program the officer training attendance reports so where how what's the progress are we there do we need more training what's what's the opportunity a plans for area events such as speech contests or goals strategies and news that affect the area clubs so in this is more information is included in the club officer club leadership handbook than what's in your district leadership handbook I'm going to pause there and see what question, additional questions you guys have. David, do you have your hand up? You're waving. I, it's hard to tell. I thought I'd try again. I think my audio is corrected. Sounds good. The, the experience that I've had is a couple of different eras. Uh, in the most recent era, have a Zoom call, get everybody together, and maybe you get a little bit of buy-in for a contest. Maybe you learn a little bit about clubs. Oh, we just lost you your audio again. I, I did think clubs will interact with each other. Nope, it's not coming through. Okay. Oh, David, we so want to hear from you. Oh, my goodness. I can keep going. I can just. No, it cuts out and it like the background noise, I think, picks up and then it cuts you right off and we can't hear you at all. Oh. <laughs> Next time, for sure. We need to get a presentation from David to explain what uh, 
his experience. But yeah, I think what David is kind of getting to, like, if you have not had area council meetings uh, last year, if your your past area council me um, meeting didn't happen, you know, you could just start. It doesn't need to follow, uh, you know, this structure, or this outline. Uh, just start with what's important. Like, why would you want to get your club, your club leaders together? Why would they spend that time with you? You know, I, I think challenges is, is such a, a good one. But if you are going to do area councils, area councils is a good place, or sorry, area contests. Area contests is a good place to start too, like just to get the planning going. They all kind of know those are going to be happening. Uh, so it's really just starting something. You might be changing the culture in your district this year if it's not, has not been occurring. And so it'll be, yeah, attendance is going to be a challenge. You know, the club officers won't see it. But if you can add value to them by getting them together and discussing something that's important to them or sharing ideas or problem solving uh, or uh, sharing information, if they see the value, it will help reinforce the benefits of it and ensure they keep coming back. Or they'll spread the word and be like, yeah, actually, this was good. Um, you know, take minutes and share that with the folks who missed out on the meeting so they can actually see, oh, that's what you guys talked about. Actually, geez, I wish I actually would have been there. That would have been a really good discussion to participate in. Uh, so there's lots of lots of tips there. Um, I do have a, a couple of examples of agendas uh, that I've seen in the past. Again, this is specific to my district, so I don't want to hang you up on what the content is because these are very old and things have changed and my district has done things a little bit different but um just a just a couple of examples uh, you know this was uh my area nine council meeting for my area director when i was president um he talked about recognition they had created an area success plan together, so they set area goals together. Uh, did a quick roundtable on how your club is club is doing, um, and then a bunch of information about training dates, uh, reminders. Uh, they did a reflection on the success plan, uh, just to see what went well, what didn't go well. Uh, came up with some marketing ideas, so they. We decided to do a farmer's market promotion together. So we we pulled together as an area, all the clubs in the area, and, and did some membership drives together. Uh, you know, more people, less work, but each club gets the benefit. And some introductions. So that's just one example. Um, I got one from my year when I was area before council. Um, area governor. Uh, we focused on introductions and, and our own goals, uh, went over some division news, what was coming up, uh, talked about district news, what was coming up in the district, the, the conference or convention at the time it was called, our incentives that were coming up that were sponsored by the district. Uh, and we had also set area goals for ourselves. Um, so we were focusing on, I was just trying to convince them to uh, take up the district incentives and just do like two activities out of it. Like just try to achieve two of those incentives and see see how that goes. So nothing too overwhelming. Uh, and then we went into a round table of uh, successes challenges with each club president reporting out or whoever was there. So unfortunate. This is MC Yammers. Isn't that the best club name ever? MC Yammers. They folded my year as area director. So upset. I'm like, can I just keep your name? I'm like, I just want to keep that name. Anyways, if anyone wants to use that name, it's open. MC Yammers. And we, of course, did, went through communication preferences. Like, how many times did they want to be receive emails from me? Like, was it too much? Was it too little? Do we need to do more? Um, uh, we went over the newsletter and frequency of, of meeting time. So this is one of the introductory calls. So that's just a, some examples of things you can try. But again, if you haven't had area councils for a while, 
just tr just try something. Yes, I can definitely share those uh, agenda templates. Again, uh, yes, just be mindful that they're all a little bit different. Uh, Linda, did you have your hand up? Yes, I think you just answered it. I was wondering if you'd be willing to share those because I've had no experience with area councils and these are really helpful. If you could like, like George Kane is my division director. If you shared it with him, he could pass it on, that kind of thing. Sounds good. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to, just because we just have a few minutes left, I'm going to touch briefly on the division council meetings as well, because those are uh, something required for the role of division director, of which the area directors are responsible for. So I'm going to go back to the district leadership handbook. Oops. I'm going to find it. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. Division council. Yes. So the functions of the division council is to act as a, an advisory group for the division, uh, focusing on achievement of the club, area, division, and district objectives. Uh, talking about the council meetings, training, and context. Uh, so the purpose, of course, is uh, for the division is to provide district support, aid in administration, assist in presentation of speech contests, assist with training area leaders and club officers, and help clubs and areas achieve distinguished. The division council, as we showed, is made up of the chair, the division director, any assistants, uh, as well as the area directors themselves within the division. Uh, division council manages the division activities, facilitates the achievement of club, area, division, and district goals, help with administration activities such as the division council meetings, training, and contests. So they're also keeping an eye on that. The division council meets at least twice each year. And meetings are conducted in person or online, and you need four weeks notice ahead. Um, but those are, if you think for division directors, those are your team meetings. You know, if you were leading a team, how frequently would you want to check in with your team and, you know, bring everyone together as peers? You might also have one-on-one -on -one meetings with everybody just to make sure that they're okay. But there's opportunities for you to bring everybody together and, and just facilitate that sharing of information or making sure everybody's clear about their roles. And this is this is also included in the club leadership handbook. Um, and it includes what business could be conducted or should be conducted, could, should, <laughs> uh, the area plans, goals, and progress in the Distinguished Area Program. Uh, so if you ask the area directors at each of these meetings to maybe provide a bit of a summary ahead of time, I mean, one of the key skills that we learn uh, in communication is how to effectively and concisely provide status reports. Uh, so this is a good opportunity to kind of practice that and, and see how effective you could be there. Uh, the club plans goals and progress in the Distinguished Club program. So you can take a look at the dashboards. Uh, some of the pre-work included links to the, how to read the dashboards. Uh, so that might be something you guys look at together, kind of see who needs help. Um, the club officer training attendance report seeing who do we need to target, where do we need to focus some attention, and the plans for division events, such as training or, and or speech contests. Any questions about division council meetings? Is that a little more, are division council meetings a little more familiar to folks that have been in district leadership before, not the new area directors? <laughs> cool. All right. Well, that was a lot of information, but I, and it wasn't really what I intended to present on today. Um, you know, we got to first know what we're doing before we can be really effective at it. Uh, but I do encourage you guys to really, really, when you're communicating meetings, that meetings are going to be happening, really explain the why, the purpose of that meeting. Why do you want them to get together? Why should they spend some time with you and together as a group? And you know, if you're able to kind of figure that out and know what message works best for them, I guarantee you, you'll get active engagement and, and involvement in your meetings. 
Um, and if it's a, a long ways away from what people are expecting, yeah, it's going to take some time. So don't be discouraged if only one or two people show up at your first meeting. You just keep showing that you're there for them and that there's value. Even two people is a good discussion. Uh, so record those minutes, send those out to people, and they will they will surely join you eventually um, and just keep uh, talking it up. So with that, I'm going to conclude. I'll drop uh, some of these links into the chat, some of the books that I talked about as well. And uh, all the best. Uh, whatever you guys have any questions, uh, just let us know and we'll be there to support you guys. Back to you, Ed. Thank you so much, Catherine. Really well done. Really put a nice capstone on the information we shared here this evening. Helped to clarify some points that maybe were not as clear as they could have been. We started thinking about things and wondering, what the heck is that? So it's a lot clearer for me now, and I knew some of this stuff already. So <laughs> I think I think we've done well. At this time, please help me to invite back to the virtual lectern for his closing comments, our District 106 Director, Distinguished Toastmaster, Gopu Shrestha. Gopu. All right. Okay, I know. Ed and um, Catherine loaded with you full of information. But please, here is the three things please remember. First, family first. Even what we are saying here, forget about it. Family first. Number two, work in a team. You are not alone there. Whatever we are sharing, all these things, this is a director, do it, yeah, they have to do. But work in a team. That's why we have area directors, division directors. Work in a team, ask them if you cannot conduct you can conduct a joint uh, area council meeting. You, you can ask any other area director to do a club visit for them. You can ask division director, you can ask me, you can ask Ed, ask for help. Family first, work in a team, always ask for help. All right, I want you guys to have a good experience. Don't burn out, please. Don't burn out because of Toastmaster. This Toastmaster should be a supplement, soft skill for you to manage all this in a cool, calm way. Teamwork. Please, teamwork, we are here for you. Always, I am thinking like this, I am here. I am serving you. If I'm able to serve you, if I'm able to make you happy, happy whole member will be get benefited. Please. Try to do one thing which you really like. If you cannot do things, ask for help. That's why division directors are always there. They've been through this, but they will not know until you ask. If you have family problem, if you have work problem, don't hide. Just say that I cannot come, George. Can you help me? Of course. I cannot conduct this uh, contest. David Rasmussen, can you please help me? Of course. He will bring his whole team there. Again, please have a good experience. Have a good experience. You will enjoy. Believe me or not, you will enjoy. Don't give a lot of stress. Oh, this is a full time. No, no. This should supplement your work, your family life, and everything. Yes, and I have to give here, give all these things because this is what we have signed up for. But again, we are human first. Okay? Please. Thank you very much. Back to our program quality director. Thank you, Gopu, for your service. Thank you, Catherine, for your service. Thank you to all of you for your service. We hope we haven't shocked you too much. And what the heck have I gotten myself into? But as Gopu says, don't be overwhelmed by it. The purpose of this fundamentally is to provide you tools which will help you to succeed in helping our clubs 
to achieve their member goals, which helps them to achieve their club goals, which helps to achieve the area goals, the division goals, and all of a sudden we'll find ourselves a distinguished district because of the excellence that we've been supporting in each other. Please continue to support each other, ask those questions, reach out for help. Our next meeting will be on August 4th. For those of us who can, it will be in person. I'm investigating how to make it a hybrid meeting as well. Come in person, there will be some pizza and perhaps some other foods as well. We will wrap it up. We'll get some of our uh, club chairs, committee chairs to come in and talk to us about some of the things that they're going, that they're working with in our program year. So you're aware of who they are and what they're doing. And we will celebrate the conclusion of your seven hours of division and area director training. We'll probably some certificates and a lot of woohoo! <laughs> With that, folks, have a pleasant evening. I look forward to seeing each of you again very soon. Take care.